So uh, when we wrote Standing in the Dark, it was me and Andy and a good friend of ours, Kai, and Dave also was there, you know. Yeah, he wrote it in uh, overlooking the O2 Arena, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, we, uh, we, were, we were sat in Kai's flat at the time. Uh, first time we ever wrote with him. And yeah. um, he's probably one of our most important songs, I'd say. Yeah, it was actually the day you found out. It was the day, yeah. yeah. That, uh, I found out that my ex-girlfriend had a new boyfriend, so that did hurt. Remember that? Man, I, remember it well. I remember it well. Um, so yeah, when we perform it live and it, everyone seems to love it, it's a fan favourite. It seems to have caught on really well live, doesn't it? Everyone knows the words even though like we've not we've not released it until yeah. just now. Definitely my favourite song to play live. Yeah. 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 It's a big one. The next track we're gonna speak about is a song called Gone. Which is a song Andy wrote and brought it to us and it was just like a verse and a chorus. Just piano and Andy singing. And we didn't really know where it was going to go. And then we went into Rack Studios in London with John Shanks. And uh, it just kind of came alive, turned into this epic kind of... Big song. He really, really took just... it somewhere else, yeah. didn't he? It was like, you know, when he started to get that... Because it started with the... Da -da 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 on the piano. And then we moved it to guitar and put those cool delays and stuff. And then it like, it just really like, it really took off. That was, my favorite, yeah. that was my favourite song to watch you record on drums, actually. Yeah, you went Because you really, you really fancied that one. I did, I did go yeah, for it. it. And then uh, John kind of added like a sing-along chanty bit, which kind of took the song somewhere else again. And then we were just like, you know what, why don't we add a massive anthemic guitar solo? And then you did my actual, my favourite guitar solo from the whole album. Hey, it's a favourite drums and favourite guitar solo. Hey, fantastic. Nice. Straight in away, no messing around. Ba -bum -bum -ba -bum -bum -ba. Taking Over Me was our um, second single, went to number three, and um, it was probably the, the easiest song I've ever wrote, actually, that. Yeah. Literally one afternoon, we wrote the song, like, a couple of hours, sent it to the lads, and we weren't that sure, were we, at first? Is it very Lawson or not? But then we grew to love it, didn't we? And live, it really connected, and... It's when you hear it in the sunshine. When you, when you hear it in the sun's out and like, you're having a couple of bevs or whatever and it comes on, you sort of think, you know, it puts you in a good mood and I think it that's... It makes sense, doesn't it? A lot of the other songs on the album were about heartbreak and breaking up and were taking over me. We just wrote about the, the beginning of the relationship, the exciting aspect of it. It's a nice it and, change because it's yeah. so upbeat that it's completely different than everything else on the album. And yeah. I think the album needed that just so people didn't think we were completely miserable. Yeah. We, we can be happy. Nice. Yeah, it has happened. It has happened. Nice to um, co-write a song with John Shang, our producer. So that was uh, that was really nice too. He's a great writer. I like patience by Take That, and it was really nice to uh, to write a song with him. So yeah. Everywhere you go was a weird one because it was sort of like one of these songs that we we loved and like we we even wanted it to be a single like we loved it that much. I had that never... riff for years, didn't I? That yeah, that acoustic yeah. thing. Yeah, we had it from like one of the first ever practices that we ever had as a band. And uh, we Probably kept four years ago. Yeah, oh, okay. we, kept, we were trying to fit into every song that we did, and uh, eventually found a nice home. You can actually it. say that song took like three years to write because that acoustic we, intro. We had a song called All Worked Out, and we tried to stick that little acoustic bit in yeah. in the middle of All work. Worked Out. It didn't work. Tried to stick it in about three or four other songs, yeah. and Andy was like, "I think it works in this one." Because we wanted it in so we badly, in. but we were just teasing we ourselves. We found a home, didn't we? We found a loving home for it. It's one yeah. of the most sing-along choruses as well. Yeah. Like, it's, it's, the lyrics are so simple, everyone can relate to it. And it's, and it's got all the world's guitars on it, which was, yeah. which was so fun. Many we spent guitars. ages on guitars, which was 500 quality. guitars. Yeah. Waterfall was one of the songs that we've been playing live for ages. We actually did this first um, with Avril Lavigne, when we support Avril Lavigne. It was like a massive gig for us, because we just signed and we really wanted to show ourselves as being a, a good band, which I think we did. I think it's got a turning point. All the fans have really loved that song as well since the first time we played it. Two, we managed to get two sold out headline tours before we even released When She Was Mine and we played that one through both of them. Yeah. That's the really awesome thing about the album that quite a few of the tracks that all the fans know already because we did two headline tours before even the first single was out. Look what's going on this one. Strings on this one. Strings. Very, Very cool. Disney-esque strings. Yeah, yeah. It's probably one of the hardest songs to sing live for me. It's really, really challenging live. The note you hit at the end is like... Yeah, it's, it's really difficult. I remember but... doing that. I remember standing in the room and you were like, right, something's going to have to change here. And like Mike, one of the engineer guys, turned all the lights down and put a bit of red into the room. And I remember <laughs> looking across at you and you were like singing it and you were trying to get that last bit. You know, it moved to the B and you were like... You know what it was? Because... Um, who this song was about. Well, this is this, the lyrics in this song are so personal. Like, it's pretty much a story about exactly what happened. 
for Oxygen Festival, remember? Yeah. And I uh, yeah. seen my, uh, in, in, in Ireland, and I seen my, my ex-girlfriend there. And it was the first time you'd seen her since. First time I'd seen her since, and literally I just put my head down and I'm, it, I'm it walked was, away. It was, it was very amazing. subtle. It was, it was actually yeah. amazing. Because I looked one way. I've never seen a man around. move this it was, fast. It was yeah. a run. It was a and it's the whole <laughs> second verse in, in Waterfall is, you know, head down in a crowded place, like, which is basically oxygen. It was like, and basically I saw you and I, I walked away like, and I, I did one before one, you could yeah. see me. And then uh, we had to deal with yeah, what just, happened next. Yeah, yeah. Just, yeah. I remember when, when, when I vocaled it, um, I got a call from, um, from my ex who I hadn't seen in months and she called me whilst we were in Rack and I spoke to her for about 45 minutes on the phone and she poured her heart out to me. And then, um, I, I, and then I went in the booth and sang Waterfall and it just, it just came. It and it was just, it was just, it was. I needed that to get, to get, to get where I needed to go. You know what I mean? It's a beautiful moment. Yeah, love the song. When she was mine was our first single that we released, and it went to number four in the UK. And uh, ever well done, mate. Thanks, thanks very much. Thank you. See you too, mate. See you too on your number four. Congratulations. And when when we first played the track and heard it back, we thought. This has got to be the first single because it kind of says everything the band's about. I remember writing it and I had the title for ages, like the title. I was sitting on the train and I was like, when she was mine, like that's... It came from Toy Story. Yeah, yeah, like it was like the, the, the Toy Story 2 and um, Jesse, the uh, the cowboy, um, the cowgirl, cow yeah. Woody's friend talks about uh, when she loved me, when, when somebody loved me, that song. And um, I was like, that needs to be done for like a guy version. And obviously I just experienced it because I split with my girlfriend. And, uh, I had the title when she was mine. It's just like reminiscent, like you know, when she was mine, everything was perfect, everything was amazing. And now, you know, I wish I could just forget about it because it's hurt me so much. And when we played it live again, it was just. Yeah. Bang, I remember wasn't sitting it? in um, in the office with the head of our record label, first time we played in this song, and it just clicked. We all had a moment. Everyone was just like, "This." We played it twice. And we finished, and no one said anything. Yeah. And it was like, "Press play again. Yeah. Press play again." Yeah. yeah, and it was like, "Yep, yeah, done. First single." Yeah. Make It Happen is a song we've been playing for years. It's always, we used to start on it on every single gig. We, we still do on a lot of gigs, and it kind of, it became our live big song, didn't it? Yeah. That's exactly what it was. It was the live song, wasn't it? Yeah, and it's not really been online either, and everyone still seems to know it. I think that was one of the first songs we recorded at, at Rack as well. We did that in, in London. Because we felt so comfortable with it, and no, nothing changed from when we played it live. We just went in and played it in the studio, exactly like we do live, and that's how it kind of kept yeah. that live element of it, I think. I remember writing it with a guy called Jez Ashurst, and uh, like, we really wanted a like, Kings of Leon sort of vibe, didn't we? And then uh, we sort of took it more Lawson, but um, definitely the track which works the best live, I'd say. Like, every time something massive happens in the band, it's good. It's like, hashtag make it happen, we've done it, we've got there. And I think, because the song was written quite a while before you were signed as well, like, at that time we needed to make this band happen, and there was no way that we weren't going to go through with it. We had to just stick with it, and eventually, things should all come together. So I think it's quite, at the time, it was quite an angry song because we just wanted to get yeah. out of there and someone to listen to the band. Yeah, it was, yeah. Physical. Yeah. Very physical maybe, song. Maybe if, maybe if the album does well, we can have hashtag made it happen. Yeah. Ooh. Stay fair. Ooh. Great. <laughs> so, uh, Learn to Love Again. I'll always remember the first time I ever heard this song. Uh, you brought it into the studio. And it was like, oh, I've just wrote this song, guys. Um, like, you know, what do you think? Check it out. It wasn't like that. He was like really hesitant. It was like, right, do not hurt me, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah. Don't be worried, yeah. but I've got this song. And tell me honestly what you think of it. It was I very different it. to the usual Lawson vibe, this song, because... It was a welcome change for me, though. I, I really enjoyed it. It was like, this is just so sick. You can just see it at a festival right now, everyone going mad. A little bit more synths involved, and a little hand claps. Yeah. And for the only track on the Lawson album with hand claps. Yeah. We're open-minded in Lawson. What do we do in Lawson? We try things. We try things. But one of the one of the, my biggest memories of Learn to Love Again was uh, actually when we were out in LA, and we uh, we had the, we hired the car out there and, and all that, and we were driving down uh, uh, Hollywood Boulevard, and um, we um, had a couple of friends there, and we were like, oh, listen to this song we've uh, we've wrote, and we put it on full blast driving down Hollywood Boulevard, and we all looked at each other and we were like. Hang on, like, <laughs> yeah. we've got a killer on our hands here. This, this, is, this, is, this is a big song. With uh, it was Stolen, the track Stolen, we um, again was one which transformed quite a lot when we took it into uh, to John Shanks when we did it. Um, I remember writing it um, as I was moving out of Chapman Square actually, and it was uh, 
surrounded by a lot of empty boxes and um, basically I felt like everything I had over the last few years